Okay, debt negotiation basics. We are not a debt settlement company, but today it's been kind of a, I've been on a roll today, so it's a good time to kind of to do this module. Debt negotiation. There is no magic to make anything 100% accurate come off of anyone's credit reports. If it's 100% accurate, if it's 100% verifiable, if they provide documentation that we request that fully shows that that account, yes, was started by the customer, that I see a signature on a credit application, they or they send the copy of the installment loan with the, 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 the initials and the signatures on it, and it's legitimate and a full payment history that complies with the Fair Credit Billing Act, and I see that there's no doubt that that account belongs to the client, okay, and it's collected upon by who knows what collection agency since it's been charged off by the original creditor and sold. And this is what I want to talk about. There's two different types of collection agencies. One who collects on assignment or they're contracted for a certain period of time, like this six-month period you can collect on Verizon and Comcast and um, Cox Communications and, and, and uh, or this hospital's bills. You have six months to see you, their salesperson walks in and says, I could do better than the people that you're, you're using. We will get more of your money back. We're more aggressive. We can, um, you, you'll put, um, get more money, money back. Use our collection agency. They all have salespeople that do all that. And, these people have um, so 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 new collection agency gets the account for so and so medical group a uh, group of hospitals okay those debts are not owned by the collection agency they're just collecting on those debts um, they have they're able to do anywhere between nothing off and who knows maybe down to you know 10 20 cents on the dollar depending on the case. Now, medical debt is different from charged off credit card debt. Medical debt, in many cases, if they walk into the patient first is always a, is a good example. In, in Virginia, we have uh, patient first where you can walk in and, um, and be seen and have x-rays and uh, whatever on a, on a weekend without an appointment. You can just walk in. Well, th those debts, uh, insurance usually covers, yeah, 70, 75, 80 percent of that. I've seen patient first debts for three, four, five, six hundred dollars on people's credit reports. That's just what the insurance didn't cover and they get the bill in the mail and they just don't pay the three hundred dollars and then it goes to collections and goes on the credit report. Um, they will not cut pay, they will not take any of that debt off. They want all of the money because they don't have insurance on the receivables. They they spent the money, You they perform the service and they want their receivables and they'll hire a collection agency who will put it on the reports and will have to be negotiated. Most likely it will not come off the reports. Debt that is collected upon by the internal recovery departments of the banks or financial institutions. Pick on Capital One. They're the one we negotiated with today. Capital One, if it's in their internal collection aid department that has not been charged off, those guys are on 35% commission. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with being on commission either. They're on 35% of what they collect. And Capital One, you'll get no better than 50 cents on the dollar. That's just, just letting you know the best that we've been able to do. 50 cents on the dollar is about the best you're going to be able to get Capital One. Other banks are different. It's sometimes better if it goes into collections and you're dealing with a collection agency, whether the collection agency bought the debt or not, if they're collecting on contract or assignment, in many cases we can do a better, maybe 30 cents on the dollar. But that all depends. Um, how to do it? Well, there's nothing real fancy about it. What, co what options do I have to settle this debt in full? This is what I recommend you tell the folks. What options do I have to do a settlement in full on this account? What's a, what options are available to me? There's no fancy um, anything with banks or collection agencies that do not own the debt. It's just what guidelines do you have? Then they come back with a whatever it is, 70 cents, 70% of the balance. Uh, 
I don't have the, the, the money. I've got 30%. And then it's negotiation. You'll feel like you're at a car dealership. No, I can do 60%. Oh, I can come up to 40%. I can go down to 55%. I can come up to 50%. And then they'll take a 50 cents on the dollar settlement. Almost every time. That's the be Any other questions or specific questions, our support staff's available for all, to answer all questions. But for c accounts that are owned by the original creditor, Capital One, Bank of America, City, Chase, Discover, etc., 50 cents on the dollar is about it. Now, debt buyers, let's go ahead, you know, maybe down the list, AFNI, Capio, LVNV, Midland portfolio. Um, there's, there's a long list of debt buyers, but the largest ones I just mentioned. Now they bought, they buy large portfolios of uncollectible debt that are usually time barred, that they can't sue and get a judgment and then garnish the person's bank account or uh, wages to collect the full amount of the inflated original uh, um, creditor's amount. Those debt buyers are the key. Now, they, I haven't had f real fun in years because the collection agencies have policed their practices and all the bad apples are, for the most part, out. But we still record all calls in order to try to uh, you know, see if they violate the, fair, the FDCPA, the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, requires that collection agencies have full irrefutable proof that that debt that they're collecting on belongs to the individual. That's key. Full irrefutable proof that that debt belongs to the individual that they are collecting. They use the mantra, this is an attempt to collect a debt. All information is used for that purpose. Okay, show me. Well, just because you have a statement that has my name and address and it's on the letterhead of the original creditor and it shows a, a account number, what, so what? Could have gotten that out of my trash can or, or whoever and, and photoshopped my name on it. How's that proof that I owe that debt? Where's my signature on, on something? Where's proof that my computer's IP address logged on to their website and clicked the e-sign box accepting the application? The e-sign act of 2002 for electronic signatures makes e-signing legal. Show me where my computer's IP address went on and did that, i.e. signing a credit app. Where's proof that I did it? Oh, well, you, do you deny that you owe, had a Capital One credit card? I don't, I don't deny or admit anything. I, I don't. What proof do you have that I did? It's the burden of proof is not on me. The burden of proof is on the collection agencies to fully and irrefutably prove the debt that they are collecting on. And if they cannot, then they are violating the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. By putting it on a credit report with a charged off status tag, a balance, a past due balance, and showing charged off multiple times throughout the last 24 months of payment history is illegal. It's considered a collection activity by the FTC. If it's a collection activity, then they are attempting to collect a debt. And all information is used for that purpose. They just they say that all the time because they have to. And the uh, technique had always been to entrap them into not saying that Miranda uh, and us rec having recorded the call. Haven't had to do that in years. They've cleaned up their act as making sure that every one of their agents that's really, the agents can say that in their sleep. They probably sleep talk. This is an attempt to collect the debt, and all information is used for that purpose. They, their spouse probably can't stand it. But but anyway, they're they're programmed into to making doing it right as far as how the FDCPA requires it. But they still assume that just a statement or some sort of a yes, this is your debt is the definition of irrefutable proof, and it's not. We go to court, I want to know full, just because they have some statements showing that it belongs to me, that's not proof that it's mine. The judge goes, did you have a Capital One credit card? 
Your Honor, there is so much going on. I, I just, I don't know what's, if it's night or day right now. It's, it's not, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a personal problem. On, I don't even know. But I don't think that looks like that that's actual real proof that I opened the account, is it? Well, the judge will look right at the lawyer from Midland and say, well, you know, they, they don't, they're not saying they had the debt. Customer just, they're, they're, there's just so many things on the credit reports. They just, it, it, it could be, uh, who knows? It doesn't matter. What matters is what irrefutable proof do they have that that debt does belong to the client that they are attempting to collect on. And if it's not full irrefutable proof, copy of a signature on, on something, then they are illegally collecting and can be sued for violating the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. In many cases, our techniques identify the fact that we are building a lawsuit and they know that's what we're doing. We're, we have uh, several hundred class actions building all the time. And there are different legal pools in every state who are all building class actions too. So our data will go into wherever we need to do to effectively move the case forward. This is how credit restoration works. There's no magic to make anything accurate come off of a credit report. If it's legitimate and accurate, then it has to get dealt with. The customer, all the customer needs to do is to what available settlement options are, are available for me because it has to get dealt with if it's accurate. There's no magic wand to make that thing vanish off the report. If it's a debt buyer, if it's a collection agency collecting for the original creditor, Capital One's internal recovery department or a collection agency that they've subcontracted it to for the collection activities, then it's owned by the creditor. You will most likely not get any better than a 50% settlement, just from, from my experience. A debt buyer, Midland or AFNI or LVNV or Portfolio Recovery, they all have, now, you know, you have to keep in mind as far as a business goes. They have an office building or a floor or two floors of an office building or, or more. They have overhead. They have employees who are on commission. They have managers who are on management overrides on uh, department volume. They're, they have taxes, they have payroll taxes, state and federal payroll taxes, which is you know, killing everybody, they've got overhead. So <coughs> just because they bought the debt for pennies on the dollar doesn't mean they're going to settle for pennies on the dollar because they have overhead. The best you can hope for is 20 to 35% of the balance, better than 50%. But the debt buyer has overhead. And if it's on the credit report and they have legitimate proof of that, of that debt, it depends on how old it is, whether you might want to settle or just let it fall off the report. If it's time-barred debt and that's a state-specific term and they can't be sued for the debt, they might opt to keep it on the report as a strategy as, or as to not have to pay the thing. But it depends on if they want to buy a house or not. Our program is a mortgage readiness credit restoration program. If they're looking to purchase a house, they aren't going to get the house with a $10,000 charged off deficient Capital One credit card that went off a cliff. You know, that needs to get dealt with. They're not going to get the balance with a $5,000 deficient balance of a repossession. That's going to have to get dealt with if it's legitimate. They're not going to get the house with any judgments. They're not going to get the house with any uh, tax liens, as, 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 as you all know. Um, you can help them with the tax liens, and there's tax resolution experts uh, also to help with the tax liens, but the, uh, anything that's legitimate and accurate has to get dealt with. And, and re-watch this video for all the pointers. Um, we are not a debt settlement company. We offer debt negotiation advice, but the client has to do what we, what we, uh, the advice that we offer, or we, do, we cannot do that for the customer. So just um, just letting you, this is just part of uh, the procedure. Uh, anyway, look forward to talking with you guys in the next segment.